Hello everyone and welcome to the CX Green Room. Today's show is about creating experiences that feel genuinely personalized and convenient. And that's more than adding additional channels and self-serve options. It requires a cohesive strategy and digitally empowering both customers and employees. I am delighted uh, Ginger and I have a special guest today, uh, Elsinora Martinez, who's Head of Product Marketing at Genesis. So Elsinora, please just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and your role. Thank you, Claire, and excited to be here. So as you said, I'm fortunate enough to lead our product marketing team here at Genesis for Genesis Cloud. And that includes cover everything from our Genesis Cloud platform, digital innovation, our workforce engagement management, uh, and certainly AI. And I've been a technologies and an innovator for many years and lucky enough to be at the forefront of some major technology shifts. And I could not be more excited about where we are with customer experience today and the promise of what digital can be uh, for those experiences. Well, I'm so excited you're here. And, you know, seeing that you are an industry big hitter and you are in the green room, we have to talk about what your specialty green room item is, because, you know, all celebrities have the things that they need in their green room. But we want the audience to join in the fun today because one of those items happens to be a piece of music. So I'm going to play that piece of music. If you happen to know what it is, drop it in the chat. If you get it right, you win bragging rights. So here we go. Hang on. I'm going to hit play. I must be able to guess it soon. <laughs> I think we've gotten to the point where that was a pretty good hint of what song that is. Um, so if you have any thoughts about what song it is, please go ahead and drop that in the chat. In the meantime, just so happens that Elsinora's other green room item is pink calla lilies. Now, we worked very hard to get them at the last minute, which, uh, you know, it seems that, that it's a bit of a challenge. So we, we went the other way and we have a digital bouquet of calla lilies for you. <laughs> Sorry, Elsinora, we did try. <laughs> They're not in season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, a warm welcome, nonetheless, despite your digital flowers. Hopefully someone will be furiously shazamming uh, the piece of music and we'll, we'll figure it out shortly. Um, but let's now dive in and talk about um, our theme for today, which is all around digital empowerment. And I'd like to start by just going back to the beginning and asking the fundamental question, what is digital? I mean, we, 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 we think we know what it is, but I'd love to um, to hear from you, just to really take us through that from the beginning? That's a great question, Claire, and, and often how we start talking to many of our customers, because what we're starting to find is digital means different things to different companies. And I think we can all agree that the notion of digital has changed. It used to mean email and adding a couple of channels. And, and as we progress and as we advance, and, and there's so much innovation, it now has evolved to include capturing things like what you're doing in a search term to how you can digitally empower customers and employees with knowledge bases, for example, having platforms that support self-service and extending digital to make sure that it's included as part of all of the employee tools. So employees that support digital channels are often handling many concurrent interactions. And so the digital tools used to support them are really, really critical. And so we've gone from traditionally email 
to search, to knowledge, to employee tools, in addition to an ever growing list of channels. And so when we first start talking about digital, it's about grounding customers and where you are today, what are your goals, and how are we going to progress through a series of steps that are really what are leading to some of that either digital empowerment or digital transformation. Yeah, we we think it's just adding more channels and that becomes more digital, but actually it's a much broader approach than that. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen, you know, one of our customers, uh, Textiles, they handle over 10 million member interactions across a number of different channels. So if you think about the volume in the channels and the employees to support them, it really does require really taking a step back and thinking about digital as a whole. Yeah. And you, when you are stepping back and thinking about digital um, as a whole, that means also thinking about what customers think about digital, right? So in this digital world, what are customers looking for? And is there something that organizations should keep as their North Star of providing a great digital experience? Well, I mean, generally, I don't think that from a consumer standpoint, they go into any interaction thinking about average handle time <laughs> or, or, or or some of those metrics. For many consumers, it really is about a job to be done. And you know, those can be a, a purchase or I'm going, it's a, it's a setup um, or I'm trying to switch a service. And each one of these has its own experience. And one of the things that I'll say is a digital experience with companies is going to happen whether it's designed or not. And so take that as an opportunity to say, we have to think about it and we have to design those experiences. Um, during a recent survey that we've completed around the state of CX, and you, you'll hear me mention this, um, which is a survey about 5,500 consumers and about 700 decision makers, um, we, we boil it down to customers are looking for interactions that are simple, digital, and unassisted, right? So let, let's talk about that a little bit. They're looking for interactions that are simple. As I said, it's, it's more about a job to be done. So when you think about what good looks like in the survey, 55% of consumers indicated that they want a fast response and they want to get it right the first time. Now, that may not be indicative of digital per se, but the second element of what we find that they're looking for is digital. And so, again, digital is an enabler to be fast, uh, to be asynchronous and to be contextual. And I think that's a big part of what we think customers want. They want to make sure that even as they change channels in these digital interactions, that we're maintaining that context. Um, and the third piece is unassisted. And unassisted gives them an opportunity to interact with companies and brands on their own time. And so what this survey shows us is that 30% of customer service right now on the websites are limited to FAQs. So if you're thinking about a digital world and you're thinking about unassisted interactions, you, we really have to think about supporting them beyond just those FAQs. So absolutely simple, unassisted. Absolutely. And, you know, you think about some of the data that you just talked about with consumers. Consumers really want the same thing as companies, which is give me my answer fast and simply and let me get on with my day. And companies want to get you the resolution fast. So it's, you know, aligning those goals on the digital side as much as like on the voice side is something we're seeing. And that's it's a, it's a, such a great point. I think when when digital experiences don't work well, it's very painful for the consumer, right? Having to change channel, repeating themselves, you know, essentially starting over each time is very frustrating. From the business side, when digital is not working well, what's some of the pain that they experience? Uh, I mean, you know, some of the most obvious ones are, are, are uh, customer churn, right, or, or abandonment in a particular flow. Um, our survey tells us that 31% of consumers will say they will stop doing company business with a company after a negative interaction. Um, so that's a big consideration. 
The flip side of that is that 26% of these consumers have said, um, I've lost my temper during a customer service interaction. So think about what that means for your employees. And so when it's not working well, you have the obvious customer satisfaction, customer uh, retention, but then you also think about employee engagement. And so giving the employees the right tools to feel like they're supporting the customers so that there isn't that, um, you know, they aren't sitting on that side of these customers that are losing their temper, they feel like their frustration. Um, so there's, there's definitely those two sides to consider. Yeah, I mean, that would be a really, really tough job having to handle a high volume of frustrated customers. So I see that would be a direct contributor to employee churn as well, which is a cost driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is there any low hanging fruit in terms of digital transformation? Um, you know, there definitely is. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, or even beforehand, there was this notion of meeting customers in, you know, meeting customers where they are. And we saw that companies were going all in on all channels. And so you wanted to do business through WhatsApp and all of the messaging apps and email and all of this. And it's certainly very true. And there are generational shifts in how consumers communicate with a business. But meeting your customers where they are without considering the data integration to what happens when you're switching some of those channels can have real implications for a company. Um, and in this survey, we found that only 13% of companies surveyed considered that they are fully integrated. I mean, think about it, 13%. And on the flip side, what we find is that 26% of these companies will acknowledge that they have different channels, but they're not connecting the underlying technology. So a takeaway would be really thinking about the channel strategy in a way that you're connecting the data. If you're moving from an email to SMS, if you're moving to one of the messaging apps, if you're losing, using live chat, is really maintaining and retaining the context of all those interactions for both the consumers and the employees. And you want to start with the data you have. Oftentimes when we start talking about really big um, changes that involve data, it can be a little bit daunting, but really starting with the data you have, this doesn't need to be a huge data transformation project um, to think about that, um, you know, that, that context. And so to me, that is, um, is something that is, is low hanging fruit. The other piece that I would say, Ginger, is um, and no surprise, right? Keeping up with expectations today is hard. Um, right. All of a sudden, you have an amazing experience with a brand, and that becomes the expectation with every other brand. And so the goalpost is constantly being moved. So CX is a true battleground for most companies today. But, uh, you know, a, an opportunity is keeping staff trained on new tools and processes. So not just focusing on the digital element of the consumer, but really thinking about the digital element of the employee. You've heard me mention this a couple of times. It just is really critical to consider the other end of this coin when we talk about digital. Absolutely. And so speaking of the other side of the coin, is there something else that's um, like a bigger long-term project that companies should be thinking about right now and, and, you know, a piece of advice to get them started. I heard somebody say recently, and it's a, um, it's a comment that really resonated with me is that customer experience is a discipline, not a department. And that is, that is so true. And so it is, it is sometimes a little bit harder to drive those departmental silos and, and think about the customer holistically. And in the same survey, it was really interesting to hear that 33% uh, of companies recognize that they have siloed engagement across the departments. Mm -hmm. And so prioritizing that you need to see a customer beyond a single interaction. And that means bringing your marketing teams, bringing your sales teams, bringing your customer support all to the table to think about 
the experience you want to design for your customers, right? We started talking about the experience happens whether you design it or not. And right. so holistically bringing everybody to the table so that you can think about the experience you want regardless of the channel. Yeah. We, we see that data point coming up so frequently, organizations structured by product or structured by service, and then that flows all the way down through their channels. In our, in our recent research, uh, we, we, we saw the trend that satisfaction with channels, a lot of channels, except for voice, continues to decline year on year. Like, what would you, what would you attribute to that? What could explain that? Um, I, I think part of it is we were talking about the expectations. And so, um, the, you know, our research says that um, messaging apps, for example, are determined to be 48% effective in, in meeting these expectations. So we're starting to see a shift, but it isn't necessarily as high as we see with voice. And I think part of that is that when you have to switch channels, you might have a, a you know high sentiment, a positive sentiment on a particular one. But if you have to switch and a customer has to repeat themselves and an agent doesn't have the right context, even if it's supporting a digital interaction, I think that satisfaction is less about the effectiveness of a particular channel and the connectedness. So that's one perspective. Um, the other perspective is, as I said, uh, a lot of companies are only offered FAQs to self-serve in a particular website, for example. So if you've gone into it trying to do an unassisted self-service interaction, then satisfaction is going to be low if the information is not in real time and it's not fluid for consumers. And so... You can't look at having live chat and supported interactions and consider that you're checking the box. It has to be knowledge in general has to be a focus to understand that there's a series of new requests and new trends and new information that you get asked every day. And how are you continuing to keep up that database so that you're filling up the information that's available? And so it's very much real time. It's very much dynamic. It's very much changing. And so having teams that are continuing to make that information available is one of those um, opportunities to increase the sentiment around a particular channel. You know, I, I want to jump in with earlier um, in the conversation, uh, one of the, someone in the audience, Michael Thompson, made a comment about that's interesting that we're still talking about this, you know, these topics over all this time. And I think one of the reasons that that's the case, if you think about, um, I'm just going to go on a little tangent to bring this point back around. Uh, in 1993, Don Peppers and Ma Martha Rogers wrote the one to one future and coined the term one-to-one -one marketing. And it was talking about giving that mom and pop store experience at scale. And it was a future vision of that we now have the technology to do more and more. And I think uh, you know, the reason that we're having, we have these conversations about digital transformation for so long is because um, there's that quote, the future is already here. It's just not evenly uh, dispersed or what have you. So, you know, there's companies that are much further along in digital transformation. And there's also, there was digital transformation in different departments at different speeds. And now with cloud technology and composability, there's so much more opportunity to do these things that we're talking about um, like you're saying, Elsinore, with you know pulling these channels together th than we were able ever able to do in the past, and I think that's why the conversation is so important to keep having. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Ginger. And what we see is that a lot of companies made digital transformation a priority, and a way that they're choosing to solve this is by sometimes using best of breed digital or point solutions. And these point solutions, they all have tremendous potential. Uh, but again, when you're not thinking about the underlying data that's being shared and being able to see a customer beyond a single interaction, then I would challenge that technology alone 
isn't going to yield the transformation that you're looking for. Right. Transformation in our space for all companies is really about relationships. It's really about seeing that customer, as I said, beyond a single interaction. And so having all of this on a modern, open um, cloud platform where you can bring all your channels together. And, and you know, there's, there's still very much a need for voice, but where you can have those digital conversations happening alongside for that context is really going to allow you to look at your customers holistically um, and, and really drive that notion of context. And I think just to pick up on what you were saying about digital transformation, Ginger, we've just asked, you know, 700 organizations where they are in the, in these sort of stages of maturity. And actually only 13% responded that they do have this uh, connected technology and data in order to power the entire experience holistically. So there's still such a long way to go for organizations and probably in five years time, you know, that number will be higher, but we'll still be having quite a few of these same conversations. Absolutely. Well, so we've got a, um, a question from George Wiedemann. Um, so how do the dots of all these point solutions get unified into a smooth customer experience? It's a great question, George. Uh, more and more, we're seeing the importance of journey management um, and really understanding that experience. Uh, Genesis, we've recently acquired a company called Pointalist, and that is exactly what they do, is they have the ability to leverage data uh, from your CX system and CRM, CDPs, you know, other data that might be in your ecosystem. And what it does is it creates this visualization that really helps you understand the entry point and the points of friction for your employees and your customers. So if you think about the old days of, of journey mapping as people crowdsource with stickies around a whiteboard, this is the transformation, the digital transformation we need in that space, actually to be able to visualize it and to be able to see it at scale. Because again, part of this is how do you see it in real time? How do you make adjustments in real time? Um, and so we're very fortunate uh, with our point of list acquisition, but very fortunate that this has been a space in which there's been so much innovation to um, allow companies of visibility to be able to smooth it, as you're asking. Yeah. And the, the, the great thing about uh, journey management and optimization, too, is that since you have the vis visibility into all or most of your channels together, you have left less of a chance of making an adjustment in one channel that actually has a negative effect in another channel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you make, when you change X, you can also see what happens to Y and Z and make sure that they're all good things. Mm -hmm. So, and speaking of good things, this has been a fantastic conversation. Um, we are at time. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much. Elsinora for being here. Um, if you've all enjoyed the show, please feel free to like, share, tag a colleague so that they can watch the replay. And we look forward to seeing you in the next CX Green Room. Thank you so much for coming, Elsinora. Thank you, everyone. Thank you both. My pleasure. It's a topic that I feel very passionate about, and I'm excited to see what everybody goes back and starts creating now. See you next time. <laughs>